Hi everyone, this is uh, Life in Florida. My name is Eri. Today we will talk about vanilla orchid. Come with me. I was uh, talking about it so I was very excited one and a half years ago when I got this orchid at the local nur local nursery and um, I remember I was told by the nursery uh, person that you know you might gonna be able to grow it like vegetatively uh, like vegetation wise but um, this is a novelty, I'm probably not going to flower at Zone 9B outside, not in a greenhouse. So I was like, that's fine, I was, um, I was like, no, I still want the vanilla orchid. Which, it, this is the edible kind uh, of orchid, this is the vanilla planifolia. And so I remember I took it home and I wasn't sure where I'm going to put it and I wasn't sure if I'm going to just take it inside at winter time or maybe it would survive outside uh, well in this area zone 9b sometimes we go down to close to freezing um, last winter time I remember it was 36 but no problem, the orchid survived and it flowered this year. So, um, little backstory, I uh, first put it to the tamarind tree. That was a little too uh, shady for the vanilla orchid. And so after that, I was like, well, let me try at the low pot tree because this one get more filtered light and uh, that's what the vanilla orchid loves. So, and then it just worked out here and it started to grow up to the tree and it just grew into the tree. You see the uh, uh, roots, the air roots, and you can see it on the other side event look at that look at how long those roots there's no way I can remove this one without hurting the plant anymore so it yeah it doesn't even matter if it's freezing it has to stay here and uh, hopefully it will survive uh, even if like I said it was 36 Fahrenheit uh, last winter time and it survived no problem and I think it's the because the low quad stays uh, uh, green and it's just um, held it and uh, it didn't die because of it. Uh, what I did during that time, uh, during the drought period, during the winter time, because it's a dry air, even in Florida. Um, so what I did, I just misted, sprayed water on the leaves on the tree almost every day i think i truly believe that that helped that helped to kind of replicate the the rainforest somewhat help i'm pretty sure because the next i knew that there was a miracle happening <laughs> Well, it was a miracle for me. So anyways, I saw that um, buds, flower buds started to show up. What happened each day, I, I believe it was March, um, May, March, each day um, a flower opened. And so I had to come out one by one. I had to pollinate it. I have a video, by the way, I'm going to try to cut it in. 
and I have also flowers of the vanilla orchid flowers so I will make sure that that will be it and uh, if you wouldn't mind to come closer to see the green beans green pods they are actually pods but I think everybody calling them beans but that's fine either way I'm super excited to have these and um, looking forward for the vanilla ice cream yes so um, propagation wise very easy at least that's my experience with it um, you don't want to put it in the ground but you can put it like on top of the ground and just use a lot of organics meaning a lot of leaves and just uh, replicate the rainforest also and they are semi epiphyte so they are pretty good of taking uh, nutrients from the air and that's why it's so important the humidity so they keep happy and they fruit and hopefully giving us some good vanilla beans I tried to propagate it actually I propagated it and um, I didn't realize at the time it get a certain irritant sap whatever you call it it's clean sap when you cut it and so I got got it on my skin and you can see it a little bit but it's getting better so I got the one that I propagated it's growing on this area it's another loquat. This is a baby loquat tree and it's doing good. It grew, grew, oh, <laughs> grew a good amount already. You can see all the new leaves. And uh, I'm excited to have another plant and uh, it will work out with the loquat. Chocolate trees, cocoa tree, trees are perfect for orchids uh, for a vanilla orchid if you have a chance to get it on a, a cocoa tree that's even better but the loquat tree worked out really well as well so uh, what else um, I am super excited and proud that I was able to make a flower <laughs> Because, like I said, everybody was like, oh, I don't think you can do it. Not at zone 90. So, um, I'm very, very happy. And uh, all I can say that it doesn't matter what other people's experience. Just try. Try your best. And sometimes you get a good surprise. <laughs> and uh, what else would I would be a good information well like I said um, I had to hand pollinate because there is no um, bee that it would pollinate it here uh, the bee the only bee that it's a small bee and it's not um, it, you can't find it anywhere else but Mexico and so everywhere else in the world Madagascar and all every they have to do it one by one, <laughs> one by one. It's ridiculous, uh, tedious, or <laughs> what would be the good word? But you ha they have to, that's why it's also so expensive. It's very expensive. I believe it's the second mo most expensive, uh, the vanilla bean. Um, which one is the first, the, the red uh, saffron? I think the saffron is, yeah, that, that one's very, very expensive. So anyways, back to the vanilla bean. You imagine that they have to do it one by one and um, just to pollinate it one by one. It it's also has to be successful. Pollinating, you have to do it with a toothpick. Like I said, I will post the video and I'm going to try to explain it a little better because I'm not sure if you're going to see very well on the video because I had to do it by myself and didn't have a good angle but uh, if any questions I can answer and help out if needed if you like this video please subscribe and like the video and if you have any questions post it down 
in the comment section. Bye! <laughs>